Welcome to stream number 57 in this series where I am programming, well, tonight not an NES game, but instead working on the asset tool. Um, so last time we had gotten the asset tool to export uh, information a little bit differently uh, to accommodate... Um, what did we change last time? We changed, oh, the enemy spawn points. That's what it was. So if we open up Tiled, why is Tiled not launching here? In Tiled, we added the ability to uh, add objects to this object layer, which are the flyby enemies. Um, and we have the ability now to take them, put them wherever we want, in the map uh, and then export these and uh, they just show up that's pretty cool very simple to work with I'm excited that that was uh, relatively straightforward to do um, but tonight what I want to work on is uh, the asset tool itself and the reason I want to work on that is because it's working okay you know it's got it's got the right um it's exporting the data the right way nothing problematic about that part but um what i um sorry uh consider turning down all right well <laughs> uh obs was was giving me some instructions apparently I'm doing too much and it was not happy with me uh, but anyway maybe I need a more powerful PC uh, to be able to do this but anyway so um, we have this now loading the map properly um, so that we can export uh, the map out with our enemy data so if I export the project that all works um, but what I was saying before I was interrupted by the warning message from um, OBS was that right now it's just looking at the content of the folder that it's running from. And so what I was wondering is, you know, how are we going to organize these levels in a way that actually makes sense for work that we're going to be doing later on i mean we're definitely going to have multiple levels right there's no question about that part um but like what do we need to do to make that happen so go back to this i rebuilt the rom and the enemies should show up in a line now Oh, I forgot. There's still one one uh, little bug with the way that this works currently, which is that we have to remove this flyby from um, from the exported JSON. Uh, let's re-export that. Drop that into the shooter folder and rebuild. And then we go back to here. Uh, where'd it go? There. There we go. Whoop. And there are the enemies showing up like we wanted them to in the map. So anyway, that was what we did last time. It's not perfect. It's still assuming that um, we're using the same kind of enemy all the time. You can't specify or you can't, uh, it doesn't care what's actually in the enemy object layer right now. It's just using literally the same entity, but that's okay. We're, we were, the point was to get it working where we could put it onto the map. So, um, at this point, 
like I said, it was it's using literally what's just in, in this folder, which is okay. Um, but I was wondering how we were going to organize this, and it kind of occurred to me that I was being a little dense about it. Uh, and so we have this tiled map that we're using to represent the level. And we're loading it to get information about the level, right? We're parsing this JSON to get the um, to get this content about the the layers in the level and the height and width and whatever. So it would make sense that we would use this as our as our level indicator, and then from there um, we could use our different uh, TSX files to uh, find out what images we need and pull those into the asset tool. Now, uh, that wasn't originally the plan, but I, I kind of think that that's going to work pretty well because it's going to help us keep things organized relatively nicely. So what I want to do is I want to grab all of the uh, TSX files that were used and uh, move them. Now, is Tiled going to complain about that? I don't know. We'll see if Tiled is going to have an issue with that or not, but we'll move them. Technically, it doesn't matter, but I, I want that to... Oh, I've got the whole map in, in here, too. Hmm. Where do I want to move this? Let me move this into the Shooter folder. We'll call it Assets. Move that into there. And then the asset tool. Are there other TSX files in here? So the, the good thing about this is this is going to help us start getting things organized um, a little bit better. Because right now we're kind of just, we were, as with most of these things, just trying to get things to work, right? Like we were just trying to see what we could do to make this work for us and then uh, kind of going back to all right now that we've under, now that we understand the technical ways to make this work what do we need to do to um, what do we need to do to um, get this in a more logical, organized fashion that will work long term for the project. Um, so that's why I warn people that this is going to be all kind of asset tool stuff because I know some people prefer the 6502 programming stuff and uh, I didn't want to have them come in and be disappointed that we were working on the exclusively the asset tool tonight, but it's just easier for me to work on the scheduled streams than it is um, just independently uh, especially lately I've got a lot of stuff that's been kind of taking my time for work and trying to spend time with the family which has high priority and so we will uh, oh. we will spend some time doing it here. And if people really don't like it, then I can always make some time another day. But hopefully people don't mind too much. All right, so what am I looking for? I'm looking for blue, blue tile. You know what? Let's do this also. Let's get things really well organized here. Get the raw PNG files in there, and then tile sets can go in there. We cancel this, close this. Close the map. There were 
was um, there were some additional PNGs. Yeah, there was that one for the bumper. Okay. What else? Any other images in here? No. All right. So we've got our PNGs in there. We've got our tile sets in there. Let's reopen the map file again and fix what got broken from moving that stuff around. Oh, I didn't move that into here. Okay. So now it doesn't know where anything is. Locate file. Uh, This is looking for blue tile, and it's missing its image. That's fine. Open tile set. This is bumper. Locate file. Locate file. This is flyby. Okay. fix all the uh, tile sets that I broke first and then we'll fix the images green tile okay so blue tile is there and then bumper and then gradient Although we don't use the gradient anymore for anything, but I figured we'd get it all fixed up. Green tile. Okay, now that's all saved and this is showing up correctly again. Great. And then uh, if we re-export this again, we should get a updated map JSON file which we did, and okay. Uh, why is flyby TSX? Where is Ah, that's why. Alright, so let's move that here. Replace. Here and that. All right, so now that's all sorted out, we'll export it again. Okay, so we've got our consistent paths. Because the idea is we're going to have the asset tool actually look at these paths to determine where it should be looking for the files um, that it needs to compose this. And, and then that will be what we show in this list. And then we'll be able to take the PNGs and convert them to sprites and whatnot. And we'll, we'll do some organization there um, all right so let's get started with that so the first thing I want to do is right now this is composing the list of files based on just the content of the the folder that the tool is running in what I want to do is I want to change this to take a parameter So I want, it, I want it to take parameters, and I want it to take a parameter that is the map JSON file. Um, so let's see, if argc is less than two, um, error usage, NES asset tool uh, map dot JSON.
return one. So this should fail now. Okay. Uh, debugger. Let's give it a path projects NES asset tool. NES asset tool. Map one dot JSON. So I think I did that right. Now, obviously, it's not doing anything with that. I'm just having a, having a check that the argument was even passed. Um, all right, so now... Uh, let's say map file name, max file folder name is that. Um, What did I, uh, did I do string copy as a platform? I don't remember. I know that there were a few things that I... I don't remember if I included those or not. Uh, as a tool hooks. No, I'm not going to mess with that right now. One one problem at a time. Stream copy, yes, map, file name, max file folder name, um, argv1. Okay, so there's our path. Great. Now, um... Once we get past here, we will do load map, map file name, uh, max map. Let's see, I don't remember what my arguments are there. Let's just copy that from somewhere else where we actually do that. Yes, there's we we do our initialize initialization of the window and we have our variables. So there's that. So this should load the map and let's say if not print F um, could not load map file. Insert error message. Probably should have some actual error message here, but we don't have that right now. We'll come back to that. that so that loads the map um, that calls the initialized GUI all right so let's see if we actually get here after we do that system hooks open file oh you know what I'm doing this before we initialize the uh, platform code that's not gonna work uh, load map Right, this is uh, called, yes, okay, that's fine. Um... <clears throat> All right, 
right, so now. Okay, so it loaded our map and we've got buffer size, buffer, access meta tiles. There are no map meta tiles. Yep. And then max tiles, map width, map height, map objects. These are, yep, these are the map objects, map object size. Cool, so that's good. Map object count, 20, okay. Great, so we are now loading the, um, the map here at startup. All right, so now we have this current item count that we're using to populate the list in the GUI, but um, that's not what we want to be doing anymore. What we want to be doing is we want to be populating it with the map meta tiles. So let's do that. So uh, map meta tiles dot hmm. Okay. So less than max map max meta tiles. Okay. So less than that and then we say map meta tiles i dot id doesn't equal zero and so let's see if that shows up in the list properly now because if it has id zero then it wasn't populated when we loaded the map stack what is it trying to blit here map buffer size <clears throat> oh if map buffer size is greater than zero oh but you know what we don't actually have the map selected um i'm going to comment this out for now rebuild that so what it was doing it was trying to draw the map but um, that's not going to work based on the um, there we go uh, oh no sort of it's not going to work based on the uh, current um, implementation where we're loading the map uh, and then using the map to uh, determine what we're showing here so let's do this so oh it's using okay it's still using boo uh, it's still using this stuff so instead of using current file list we want to use this Although it doesn't actually matter because, oh, that's what matters. That was what I didn't do properly um, because I wasn't selecting anything. Okay, cool. So those are the PNGs that are part of the map. I wonder, can I change the title here of the app? Yeah, I can. Um, so let's do, I wanted to show the name of the uh, map that's currently loaded in the window. Um, all right, so string format buffer. Why do I have that as a 496?
Okay, fine, 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 Microsoft. Oh, dummy. Yeah, you gotta actually pass that as the name if you wanted to use that as the name. Okay, try that again. Cool. All right, so now it's loading those PNGs. I guess the question is. How do we want to handle? Because right now there's no format for. I, I'm looking at the map. Maybe should I make a different file format to handle the content and then bring all this stuff together? Because the issue is right now, like the way the asset tool works when you select. An image because it was just using what was in the folder yeah I know you don't have any of the things I'm looking for um, none of that is correct uh, because it doesn't have the um, sorry um, because it doesn't have the the map from tile doesn't have any knowledge of what the asset tool is doing and the asset tool is was originally just looking at what was in the folder directly i do want to bring the two together but i don't want to necessarily be looking at what's just in the path directly let me do something else real quick here so right now we're taking the name of the tile set and we are truncating it so that it does not include the doesn't include the uh, full path anymore so we do want that uh, because we're going to need it so full path max small max file folder name Don't search the output. All right, so that's this. So this is the full. That's not even technically the full path. It looks like it's relative path sometimes, but it should be, hopefully, let's see, will it be close enough for, no, it won't. Be. It'll be, because it's relative to where, relative to where the export puts it. Hmm. Let me finish this line of code here. So what the problem I'm thinking about here is if you look at the file paths, they're relative to the placement of the export, it looks like. Is there a way to... <sighs> it doesn't look like there's a way to...
doesn't look like there's a way to make it output an absolute paths. XML here for a second. That's also relative path. All right. I don't know that it's worth trying to fight that right now. I feel like that's going to be a problem later, but that's all right. Um, I don't know if the slash being the wrong way feel like it's not going to work. Full path. Oh, this is still... Looking at the wrong thing. Can't remember if Windows cares a, as much anymore about the um, slash direction. I think it does, but I've also seen it not care. Full path. Current image. No. All right. I guess it does care. All right. So. Load map, where are you? Copy. <clears throat> it's object group, there's the tile layer. Okay, it's here. So we have this copy and then Steal this. Um, model car counters less than string length of map meta tiles m full path. Um, so this is a little, I mean, I guess technically it's a little dangerous, but basically it's just taking the pointer full path and checking to see if it's the null. If it's not, it checks to see if it's the forward slash. If it is, it replaces it with a backslash and then it increments the pointer. I mean... Really, is there anything that's going to happen? No, because I mean, I did the string copy s. It's going to make sure it's terminated properly um, with a zero. So, I'm not super concerned about this being a problem. It's actually the safer way to call it, where you give it the, both string sizes. So, 
that should do what we're looking for and convert the slashes to the appropriate direction for windows. Um, so let's see. But, you know, someone might look at that and say, oh my gosh, that's the most dangerous thing you could write because you're doing pointer math on it and it might break and yeah, I guess it could. Um, what is this? So, oh, come on. So Jasmine doesn't unescape. Ugh, that's gross. So it's not unescaping. Wow. All right. Um, for some reason, I thought it was going to take the paths and escape, uh, remove the escaping when it parsed it. But it is not. Um, hmm. So let's do this. So what this is going to do, if I'm thinking about this right, it will use sprintf to do the escaping and give us the escaped version with the uh, with the appropriate. No. What did that do? Why does it have double back? Wait a minute. Why does it have double backslashes? <sighs> um, am I looking at the wrong? So what is this doing? gradient.tsx. So what's giving it the escaped? Is it actually adding the escaping instead of removing? What is this doing? Um, JS code. So it's got the single slashes there. <sighs> Name. Is it my code that's getting the string value is the problem? Get token value. Get property value. <clears throat> That's bizarre. So this has double backslash to escape the backslash so it shows up, but that is not what I wanted. Let's go to here for a second and restart this because this is strange that this is uh, behaving that way. So, all right, so the name value, really? go back further. Spin. This 
just want to uh, get token. Okay, so this is just a macro. Um, all right, so that's getting the name of the token. And then we're skipping to the next thing. Buffer has that in it, and then that's the source. It is so the index is four. All right, so we have that. So it's tokens index. Let's see, tokens index. 9818. So JS code 9818. Oh, JSON code. Okay. So that's fine. Get token value. I wonder if it's the string. The string copy, that's the problem. Let's take a look at this for a second. String copy, yes. I mean, the, the code very clearly shows there is just this backslash and then a forward slash but if we look at property value after the copy it's got a double backslash I wonder if string copy is adding it. Copy first D characters of the lesser count length. Um, I wouldn't think it is, but well, you know what we can do? We can we can should be able to do pretty quick test here instead of me guessing so we do string and copy s map file name um, max file folder name and then um, backslash forward slash dot dot backslash forward slash Oh, wait a minute. Am I just being dumb? It's possible. Is it just the way that it's displaying it that's confusing me here? It's just the display. Why? That's weird that it is showing the unescaped. I, I mean, it is and it isn't. It's kind of strange that it's showing the unescaped value, but I wasn't expecting it to. I was just expecting it to show the, the literal value. All right. So that's weird. Sorry about that. So... Just to confirm, yeah, so that's just got the one. All right, and then we're just going to keep going. All right, so that's changing it to be double. Yeah, 
so that's changing it to be double backslash, which is not what we want. So this is back, it's uh, backslash forward slash. <laughs> okay, so we'll change the forward slash to backslash and then we'll do the s print to f and then that should fix it because the s print f will remove the double Wait a minute. Did I not copy it? Name. Name. What happened? Name to full path. Oh. Grr. That's not going to work. Sorry, I'm confusing myself by uh, shuffling these things around, not thinking about it enough. Uh, all right. Do I have a buffer in here that I can use already? If I change, I can change name and then just search for the, all right. That'll work. Change name, do this, and then it's going to have backslashes, so search for that instead of a forward slash. Let's see if that fixed it. you didn't do what I wanted sprint F because you still have too many how did I end up with too many no you it just has <sighs> what the hell So it didn't interpret the double backslash as single backslash escaped slash. Why? Why didn't it do that? Okay. So my seemingly clever plan was actually dumb and didn't work. Or it worked, but not what I meant to do.
Mm. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do that replace. We're going to do a string copy. any other all right well we're gonna need one here um name buffer so we're gonna string copy into that file folder oh we need the what is this thing max small buffer there okay now what's the problem just want to split it up and reconstruct the string properly Underscore str toke. <sighs> what do I need to include? String dot h. I have that. It's just that. Great. Just FYI, if you've never used this one before, it will modify the original buffer. Do, wait, does it modify the original buffer? I don't remember if it modifies the original buffer. Um, I think it does, but um, it's not uh, technically safe because this version uses... Um, this version uses a uh, an internal state tracking variable. There's another version. I don't know if Microsoft supports it or not, but there there was another version of this that uh, you you give it a character pointer that you use so that it doesn't matter if you have multiple versions of this going. Uh, but anyway, so let's see. So string cat s map meta tiles m dot full path um wait that one that would that would have been annoying if i had after all of that time just made it reconstruct the st same string we already had um do this that okay and then temp and then that should give us where's temp defined again oh <clears throat> didn't realize that I still had that Uh, unsafe str 
okay. Fine. Yeah, that's, see, this is the one I was talking about. What you do is, after the initial call with the buffer, you use the context to call it again to get the next token in the string. And that's a safer way to do it with the context than it is to do it without it, which is why Microsoft um, was warning about that, but I I don't know. I thought maybe it's only on Unix. It's S-T-R-T-O-K-R instead of S, but whatever. So there's our first piece, and we're going to... Uh, this going to be pretty... Reverse the order. Oh. So the full path. Let's put this in our memory watch so we can look at it being constructed. What I expected it to do was add that. Um, so on the way out, what we need to do is we need to remove that last slash that gets added on that we don't need. our correct path now. Yep, it's got the double null termination, but that's okay. All right, so That's fine because it's trying to load the TSX there. That obviously is not correct. Um, all right, so oh, it's renaming. I see. I forgot about that. So for better or for worse, it was renaming the PNG file. Uh, the sorry the tile set file, the PNG file, we don't need to do that. It doesn't know what to do with those, but that's okay. What I think we probably want to do is take the content now of this and interesting to me that the exported file is still using TSX extension. Well, I guess what else would it be using? So then what we need to do is we need to open, well, I don't want to open the TSX file, so do I need to look for a corresponding JSON file in that folder? Is that what we're saying? I think that's what we're saying. So all of those would be exported as JSON files that we then parse to extract the PNG file that we're looking for. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So. export that I 
really hate that it doesn't properly add the extension. That's so such a silly mistake to have. All right. Um, So that's now been exported. Let's take a look at what one of these looks like. All right, so they're pretty straightforward, which is good. Right now, I think the only thing we really care about is loading the PNG file. So let's um, let's make that happen. We can do that in the same way we were loading the um, the map. Um, but I think what I want to do is I want to do something like get tile set source file name, um, or let's say tile set file name, um, source file name max source file name right because basically what we're going to do is we are going to open the file parse it and extract out the png name all right so do that the same way we're doing it for the map um code Let's create a parser I don't expect that we're going to need the same number of tokens as we uh, as we are currently uh, using for the for the map but we have a um, we have a macro for or a constant for that so we'll just go with that so let's initialize the parser and um, yeah Zero, return false. Okay. So if we couldn't open it, then return that there was an error, so we can handle that in here. Uh, let's see. So we need to get the um, the length of the file now. C-sharp syntax here. It's an in 32 like that. Okay. Is it not a th in 32? What is it? Oh, you in 32. Okay. And then, um, 
this code is equal to uh, character pointer malloc size of car times uh, file size. Let's do this if file size is equal to zero. Return false because there is a problem. Should not be zero. And set JS code zero size of car times file size. Oops. Okay, and then system hooks read all tile set file JS code file size. And then actually we'll make file size plus plus, yeah. Give us one extra null terminating character for the text. And then, um, what is it to parse it? It's just jasmine parse, jasmine parse, parser, JS code, JS code, um, file size, null zero. Oh, I'm doing this twice. I don't need to do that twice. I don't think it actually hurts anything, but it's unnecessary. All right, so now that we have that done here, I should be able to just call, we have that function. Um, get property value, get if, get property value as, what does it get that as? That gets as not what I want. Uh, is int. There's our JS code. Um, our tokens, our max tokens. The property name is image. And oh, wait, this is a string. source file name and max source file name return false return true is there any sort of cleanup for this I didn't never really looked I don't think so no all right uh, the only thing we need to do is um, free our JS code Here, I wonder if it's cheating and use, worth using try finally to do that. Um, just to I forget, does does that work the same way in? Uh, Remember if that works the same way in. No, you can't just do a try. Try finally. Hmm. All right, so let's just do it the old-fashioned way here. This is. Uh, Again, something I know that people will freak out about. But it's okay. Exit with error. If JS code, free JS code, return false. I mean, ultimately, you know, this is essentially what, uh, I mean, it's just a branch, right? It's no different than, um, it's no different than any sort of 
flow interruption call that you might use anywhere else. It's just this happens to be a go-to, which they have been, um, of course, feel people have taught go-tos are bad. And yeah, most of the time they, they are. But in a situation like this, this is actually probably cleaner than any other solution I think I could come up with that would um, that would be appropriate. Um, I did know someone I'll show that in a second. did know someone who liked to use um, empty for loops in their code to handle error conditions and breakout type logic. Um, so they'd write something like this. They do Here's their logic, and at the end, if it was good, everything was successful, it'd break out. Or, yeah. Um, or maybe it would return here, and if it broke out, then it was an error down here. I don't even remember, but never liked that. I was always worried that I'd end up getting stuck in an infinite loop because of some some condition I missed. Can't remember ex exactly the reasoning for it. All right. Um, so let's go back to the code we were working on here. So um, yeah, there's that. In this case, I'm not doing it because I mean, we don't, it's such a small, small piece of what we're working on. Um, all right, so. Now that we go back to that mess that we were dealing with for extracting out the full path, where is that? Get rid of this. We've got the full path here. And then what I want to do is I want to replace the file extension. With dot, uh, what is this? Max folder name with dot JSON. And the reason I want to do that is because we know that we're exporting these to the dot JSON, JSON, however you pronounce it, format. So there's our full path. And then what we ultimately want to do is grab the image name as well. So we gotta do a couple of things. First, I need to add something to hold the image name. And then, um, that we would say load um, what did I call it get tile set source get tile set source and that is this and then this and that all right, let's see how that goes. Oh, I thought I set a breakpoint in here, which is what I wanted. Okay, let's try that again. That 
didn't work. Uh, why is that? So let's take a look at the object and see what we've got here. That's locals I want to watch. <clears throat> tokens zero. Oh, it didn't parse tokens index. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, JS code. Hmm. What's wrong? What's wrong with my code? File size, JS code. Parser. Tokens. Wait a minute. Uh, where's the init? There's the init. What? Oh, I didn't pass. Oh, I remember why. Okay, that was that was just a silly mistake. So um, that was because I in the map because it was so potentially so large. I had done a call to Jasmine. Par oh, that's why it was. Oh, so that's why it was parsing it twice. Uh, okay, and that's why it was doing the initialization twice. Okay, right, right, right. And, okay, so there's gradient P and G. And then we gotta do this nonsense of the the strand, the file name conversion again. Um, I feel like I'm overlooking something pretty obvious here. So let's see. It's got a backslash. If it were some other language, just do a string replace. I don't remember. Yeah, so I can find it, but that doesn't really help me here. Um, all right, so we'll just do the same sort of thing here. So let's put this into... this buffer instead of directly into the source file name. All right, so it does that. And then <clears throat> we have our context that we're gonna need and our token. And then we're gonna call this on temp and can even just do it right on and we'd have to do that conversion right and then while temp we do uh, let's do this let's um, mem uh, no uh, mem set Max source file name. Oh, sorry, source file name zero max source file name. And then we can do our string uh, cat s source, uh, yeah, source file name. Temp oh, it's max file max source file name and then this is max file folder name right no this needs temp here there we go and then this is just this one because we just want that. Nope. That. 
And same thing as before. Source file name source file source file name uh, minus one equals null character. So that should give us our properly formatted PNG name. That gives us an infinite loop because I forgot to call string tope. No. There we go. Now we should get the properly formatted name. Nope, I'm still an idiot. Pretty stupid. Let's try being less dumb and more smart. There we go. Much better. So I assume that this is going to work, much like the other one did. Great. All right, so now we have that. And let's replace that on the name as well. Although I don't actually think I care about seeing those tile set file names. So let's go with the image name, shall we? This might look a little weird in the context of of the way that we've been doing it because we haven't been showing paths like that, but that's I think that's okay. Image full path. So it didn't like Didn't like dot dot slash PNG. Well, yeah, I guess it wouldn't. Only because that's relative. Realistically. The only way that that's going to work is if we change our current working directory to map the folder, uh, be the same as the folder that the application is running in. So let's create this current working folder. We'll just copy that there. And then uh, file name length equals string length of uh, current working folder. While file name length is greater than or equal to zero, if file name current working folder file name length equals backslash, then we want current working folder file name length plus one equal to Null character, and then we're going to break, otherwise we're going to 
get out of here. And then, uh, let's see. So I know there's get current working directory. Tell me windows, how do I change? Change, I don't think it's quite change directory, but let's, um, hmm, MSDN, get current working directory. Underscore get current working directory. CPI cannot be used in applications that can be in Windows runtime for more versus zero function not support. Okay, I don't care about the universal platform. Um, it's current working directory. I want to change. Yeah, there it is, underscore change directory. I knew something. Um, what do I need to include? Uh, where's the header file that I need? I guess it's direct.h. Um, all right, file, current working folder. Current working folder. Now that's interesting. I guess that's because The way it was exported, yeah. All right, so let's let's do this. Let's, yeah. Okay, so make it here. Shooter at, uh, assets. Okay. Because it's relative to the position, the placement of the tile sets. What's well, screwy? All right. Well, at least I know what the problem is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap for tonight. I know I didn't really accomplish all that much, but I've been going for about an hour and a half now, and it's late and I don't know that I'm going to get so much more accomplished here if I go for another half hour. So I'm going to call the stream now. And, um, what I'll do is I will, uh, work on this a little bit outside of, um, outside of the, uh, stream so I can get this kind of back into working order. And then Thursday we will get into, um, how we can let's see so we've got the we'll have the asset tool exporting things properly again we will we'll have enemies partially working I'm trying to think what would be the next best step i guess to get the enemies to properly load from the map export and then this way we don't have to hard code which enemy it is we can actually properly handle that and then we're also still having that problem obviously of the this tile set i mean this is technically part of the map but it is not 
um, it is not on the meta tile layer. So we need to be able to distinguish between tile sets that are part of the meta tile layer and part of the um, part of the enemy object layer. Uh, again, I'll probably try and work on that because that's mostly asset tool stuff uh, off stream and then we can uh, come back to that. We can come back to the NES implementation on Thursday. So anyway, uh, as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Clarivus. You can also find me on Nintendo Age. I'm usually in the Discord. Uh, comment on the video on YouTube. And uh, I will see you on Thursday. Thank you for watching. And uh, have a good night.